Well, first of all, a um, little personal word of thanks to everybody that's commented on the on the last video I did about my experience with the symptoms of coronavirus now. I'm, I'm careful not to say that I've had coronavirus. I've had all the symptoms um, and some others. Um, really been very, very unwell for the, for the past um, week or so. And now I, I finally feel like I'm turning a corner and I wanna thank every, for everybody that prayed and prayed for me and prayed that I would recover. And I'm feeling a lot better today than I did yesterday. Put it that way, yesterday I felt like there was an elephant sitting on my chest. Uh, it was very, very difficult to get air into the old lungs and not a, not a pleasant experience at all. But again, I, uh, I thank everybody for the prayers and I, and I give, give glory to, to God who is able to heal us and sustain us and, and keep us alive. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Um, hopefully that is a, um, an episode in my life that's going to be in the rearview mirror. Um, I'll be fully recovered and I'll be able to forget about it and, and start going about my, my daily business and my life as, as, as normal. But I want to talk about the Corona Cops. And who are the Corona Cops? The, the Corona Cops are these overzealous police officers that whether instructed by central government, whether instructed by their police authorities, whether instructed by their superior officers, we don't know. But they seem to be taking great pleasure. These, are, these, these seem to be the same sort of police officers that a few months ago and over the past few years were knocking on people's doors for comments they put on Twitter. Now they're sending drones up over the Peak District to film people who are walking in the Peak District. Now, I saw a video of a couple, or not a video, a screenshot from a video of a couple who I think they were walking a dog somewhere in the Peak District. I don't know where it was. They were miles away from anyone. They were social distancing. They were being responsible. And the police singled these people out and humiliated them. The Corona cops aren't just active in the Peak District. They seem to be active right the way around the country, stopping people, asking them where they're going. Now, let me make it clear, as someone who's just come through a very, very nasty virus, no matter what it was, because I'll never find out um, whether I had the coronavirus or not, because I won't be tested, because I didn't present myself in hospital, and that's what's giving the, the false indication that far less people are affected by this than they genuinely are. And I saw one study by uh, an Oxford University academic that thought that up to a half of the population could have already been exposed to or infected with the coronavirus. But that's not the, that's not the issue. The issue is, why are the police wasting their time stopping law-abiding citizens that are not committing a crime and questioning them because they've decided to get in their car drive to a beauty spot that seems to be abandoned and, and go walking. And it's been happening up and down the country. And the reality is that I don't want anybody getting the horrible virus that I've just had, whether it's coronavirus or not. I don't want anybody going through what I've gone through. I don't want people going through something far worse, which leads to ICU, ventilators, and sometimes death. I don't want to see my friends or my family or my neighbours or anybody going through that, for that matter. But is stopping people, walking their dogs, hundreds of metres away from people, going to stop this outbreak? I very, very much doubt it. Now, obviously, there needs to be common sense. If you drive through a beauty spot and it's full of cars, or if you drive to a location where you want to go to a beach and the beach is packed with people then there's something going wrong and social distancing isn't working. But two people walking their dog on their own on a deserted path in the Peak District is not a threat to the National Health Service. It's not a threat to life. In fact, quite the opposite. They're being sensible. They're distancing themselves from people. It'd be far worse to go out in the centre of London and walk down a busy road where you cannot isolate. So wouldn't it be better for those people that are stuck in those sort of environments to be able to get in their cars, 
drive to somewhere fairly secluded and do their exercise there rather than go walking or running where there's lots of other people present. That's just a thought, but not according to the Corona cops because the Corona cops want to take away your civil liberties. You see, we've got to realize that the vast majority of police, police officers are good people who are doing their best in difficult circumstances, always. They're always dealing with very, very difficult and horrendous situations. However, there are senior officers, there are very, very zealous constables and sergeants who want to make your life difficult because they have a bit of power and they love to exercise that power. And they need to wind their necks in because this is not going to help the situation. If this continues, what will happen is people will start rebelling against it. So the Corona cops need to stop being Corona cops and start being police officers. Yes, if you see a, a party of 50 or 100 people boozing up and, and dancing by candlelight and, and they're all within two inches of each other. Of course that needs to be broken up and it needs to be sorted out. But it's a lot different to a little couple going walking the dog. And apparently uh, they've even taken to, there was some beauty spot called the Blue Lagoon. I believe again it was in the Peak District. The police were so worried about people going to this beauty spot. What did they do? They poured black dye into the water so that people wouldn't go. So they actually committed a criminal offence to stop people committing something that isn't a criminal offence. Strange, strange logic. The bottom line in all this is I believe that we should isolate. I believe we should social distance after what I've just been through. I believe that we should do everything we can to make sure that this virus does not get out of control. So I, I agree with the measures. I agree that it's right for people to work from home, stay at home for businesses that can't social distance to close, like pubs and restaurants and so on and so forth. I agree with all that. I agree that churches should be closed so that people can distance themselves and mosques and so on and so forth. I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. But what I do have a problem with is overzealous police officers over-policing people that don't need to be policed and criminalising normally law-abiding citizens. I mean, most of the people that have been criminalised are people that would never commit any other offence. They're, they're fitness fanatics. They're people that go running, go jogging, go cycling, go swimming. Well, that's my rant about the Corona cops. I just think we need to be very, very careful that our civil liberties are not, are not destroyed by a virus that came from the most repressive country or one of the most repressive countries on the planet. And China's getting worse. The repression of minorities in China is getting worse. The repression of Christians in China is getting worse than it has been for years. Churches have been demolished. Christian pastors that don't tow the Communist Party line are being harassed and arrested. And then we look at what's happening with the Uyghur Muslims. They're, they're being literally, literally systematically put into concentration camps. We're not hearing about it with Christians, but no doubt it's happening to Christians as well. There are some very strange cults in China. They are being severely persecuted. Anyone that doesn't toe the party line and doesn't support the, the dictator of China, and you can't really call him a communist because he's a multi-multi-billionaire, but China is a very, very repressive country. And it's very interesting that the first thing that happens when we get the China virus, and let's call it like it is, it came from China, it's a Chinese virus. When this virus comes into the country, the country suddenly becomes a communist country. Gives loads of money away and locks everybody in their homes. And then gets neighbours snitching on neighbours. People have been phoning the police complaining if one of their neighbours has gone out for more than one walk a day. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that disgusting? I never thought I'd see the day in Britain where neighbours were snitching on neighbours, just like they did in East Germany, just like they did in Bulgaria, just like they did in communist Russia. Well, welcome to the new totalitarian Britain. So we need to be very, very careful that the cure for the coronavirus, the cure is not worse than the disease. See you all soon.